A well-preserved elliptical impact basin in Tulsa, Oklahoma, shows signs of having been recognized as an unusual structure. A mound has been erected all around the ellipse and lines intersecting at a 60-degree angle have been carved on the ground pointing toward the southwest. Welcome to another edition of the Carolina Bay of the Day, where we study the secondary impacts made by the glacier ice boulders that were ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth by Michael Davies in the description of the video. Today we will be studying a very unusual elliptical impact basin. I read all the comments from the viewers of this YouTube channel, and sometimes they contain very good ideas. Eric Brown wrote, Great video again! It has inspired me to look in my own backyard for potential impact basins. I am near Tulsa, Oklahoma, which is the right distance from Saginaw Bay. Unfortunately, it looks like most of the soil here is heavily eroded. However, I have found two potential locations. The first one may be an oxbow remnant, but is elliptical and oriented towards Saginaw. The second one is also elliptical and correctly oriented. However, it is so pristine that it may be man-made and have some purpose for the adjacent gun club. Let me know what you think. I looked at LiDAR images for the coordinates provided by Eric. The first location was a dud, but the second one was really remarkable and it is the topic of this video. I have also had several comments from Steve Warner, whose last message said, yeah, yeah, more of these. We know they were there. Thanks, Antonio, but please call all of these impact basins. We need one term for this phenomena. Please, Antonio, lose the Carolina Bay term, please. Impact basins, that's the term. I think Stephen is right. These impact structures are found from the Rocky Mountains to the east coast of the United States. They are not only Carolina Bays or Nebraska rainwater basins, they are elliptical impact basins. I would like to call them the Younger Dryas Secondary Impact Basins, but some people would give me a hard time because they still doubt the date of emplacement at the Younger Dryas boundary 12,900 years ago. I will continue to use the term Carolina Bays because that is what is recognized in the geology literature, but I will take every opportunity to explain that the term Carolina Bays is a regional name of the impact basins. The Glacier Ice Impact Hypothesis, published in 2017, proposes that an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet by the Great Lakes ejected pieces of ice in ballistic trajectories. The secondary impacts of the glacier ice boulders produce inclined conical cavities with raised rims that were transformed into shallow elliptical basins by viscous relaxation. The impact basins must have elliptical geometry because they originated as inclined conical cavities. They are conic sections. The impact basins must have raised rims because they are the result of impact cratering which forms the elevated rims by compressive horizontal forces when the projectile penetrates the target. The impact basins must have a major axis oriented toward the Great Lakes because that is the location from where the glacier ice boulders were launched, and they must be within 1,500 kilometers from the Great Lakes, which was the range of the ejecta curtain of the extraterrestrial impact. The push pin in this map shows the location of Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the elliptical impact structure that we're investigating is located. Surprisingly, the city of Tulsa uses an ellipse for its city seal. Tulsa City Ordinance Number 11,022, Section 200, describes the corporate seal and flag. The corporate seal of the city of Tulsa shall be in the shape of a modified vertical ellipse. The upper one-third of this ellipse shall be a gold field. Superimposed on this field, in the optical center and pointing upward, shall be an Indian projectile point, arrowhead, of the Snyder variety in black and white facets. To the left and adjacent to the base of this arrowhead, there shall be the numerals 1 and 8. To the right and adjacent to the base of this arrowhead, there shall be the numerals 9 and 8, together representing the year 1898. The ordinance then describes the other elements of the seal. The Oxley Nature Center is a large nature preserve about 12 kilometers or 8 miles northeast of the center of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I searched the website for any references to the elliptical basin, and I did not find any. It is possible that the staff of the Oxley Nature Center is not aware of its existence. A map shows an extensive area of green space with a zoo, lakes, and nature trails around the Oxley Nature Center. The red marker shows the location of the impact structure that we will call Oxley Bay. A satellite image shows the park and the buildings in the surrounding areas. Oxley Bay is concealed by the tall trees. Oxley Bay immediately becomes visible in the LiDAR image. Our first impression is that this could not be a natural feature. It looks too artificial, almost like a stadium. 
Oxley Bay is actually larger than the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. Oxley Bay has a length of 300 meters including its outer rim, but the Rose Bowl measures only 266 meters. The Rose Bowl is about 89% the size of Oxley Bay. Oxley Bay is elliptical and has raised rims. These are two characteristics of the Carolina Bays and other impact basins. The elliptical geometry is due to the origin of the bays as inclined conical cavities, and the raised rims are the result of the compressive forces generated when a projectile penetrates the target surface. Two double lines 11 meters apart are carved on the ground tangential to Oxley Bay. The lines converge at a 60 degree angle and point toward the southwest. A 15 meter wide secondary rim seems to have been sculpted around the elliptical feature. Impact basins normally have a broader rim at the distal end of the basin which is formed by the forward momentum of the impact. In this case, the rim has been carefully built with a uniform width around the elliptical basin. It is reasonable to ask if the resulting assemblage of lines at Oxley Bay shares some cultural relation to the serpent mound in Ohio, which has been interpreted as a serpent head with an open mouth trying to eat an egg. Maybe there is no relationship, but why not? What would be the purpose of building an elliptical structure bigger than the Rose Bowl and carving those enigmatic lines with an angle of 60 degrees? The satellite image of Oxley Bay shows a faint elliptical shape and faint lines that come to a point in the west, but the satellite image is not as impressive as the LiDAR image. The buildings of the Gun Club are to the east of the Oxley Nature Preserve on the right side of this image. Thus far, we know that Oxley Bay has mathematically elliptical geometry and raised rims, which are features of oblique impacts on viscous ground. But is this an impact basin like the Carolina Bays? Using the Google Earth ruler, we can draw a line from the northeast to the southwest along the major axis of the bay. The heading is 237 degrees. When we extend the line with heading of 237 degrees toward the Great Lakes, we end up next to Saginaw Bay. This is the location from where the glacier ice projectiles would have been launched. The extension of the major axis of Oxley Bay comes within 50 kilometers of Saginaw Bay. This brings up the question of why anybody would build an elliptical structure with raised rims oriented towards Saginaw Bay. The obvious answer is that Oxley Bay was not built by humans. Oxley Bay was modified by humans, but it is an elliptical impact basin like the Carolina Bays or the Nebraska Rainwater Basins that were formed by secondary impacts of glacierized boulders ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet and whose major axis converts at Saginaw Bay as determined by Michael Davies. Oxley Bay is located 1,337 kilometers from Saginaw Bay, which is assumed to be the point from which the ice boulder that made the bay was launched. The basin has a width of 186 meters and a length of 251 meters. Notice that for the calculation of the projectile size, we measure the interior of the basin without the rim, which corresponds to the dimension of the conical cavity. The width to length ratio corresponds to an impact angle of 47.8 degrees. The diameter of the glacier ice projectile that made the basin is estimated to be 50 meters, which is one-fifth of the basin length. The ballistic equations indicate that the glacier ice boulder that made Oxley Bay in Tulsa, Oklahoma was launched at a speed of 3.630 kilometers per second. It had a flight time of 9.14 minutes and reached a height of 369 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. The trajectory was a suborbital space flight in the vacuum of space. For reference, the International Space Station has an average altitude of 400 kilometers above the Earth. Some of these chunks of ice had trajectories high enough to bring down satellites in low Earth orbit. The kinetic energy of the impact that made Oxley Bay was equivalent to 94.5 kilotons of TNT, which would have caused seismic vibrations of magnitude 6.8. Oxley Bay seems to have survived the ravages of erosion because it is on level ground and it is surrounded by creeks that drain the water through the subsoil so that water flow on the surface does not destroy its features. Still, there are many questions. Who molded the mound around the ellipse? Who made the lines and why do they intersect at a 60 degree angle? If this is a Native American ritual site, it will be necessary to involve archaeologists to conduct an investigation. This is exciting detective work. I thank Eric Brown for bringing this site to my attention, and I am eager to hear back from him to see what he found. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. You can also participate by downloading the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth in the description below. I will continue to examine the Carolina Bays one bay at a time. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. 
Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays.